exam. Good morning, everybody. Has it been a week? I've been feeling really like, oh, sluggish. Today is actually the first day that it's gloomy. Yeah, this past week has actually been really sunny and pretty hot. Honestly, it's like reminding me of summer and it's kind of making me scared because if we're this hot in February, I don't wanna know how hot we're gonna be later on. Yeah, I mean, I've just been like slow, you know, like I think I personally have some struggle with burnout, but also just life things. You know, I had a, a really intense life week. Does that make sense? Like when something happens in your personal life and it obviously like throws you off. So I have that to blame for my sluggish energy. When you have the observer of yourself being like, why do we feel this way? Why are you not doing anything? Why do you feel less motivated? Like we were fine last week, like what happened? And then you start tracking back to like what did happen. And you realize that there is a reason to feel sad or down and maybe you should just be a little bit softer and mindful of that. And it's not like, you know, you have to make a, a big dramatic change, but just rather understand yourself a little bit more. I just beat myself up. You know, I get really like strict with myself. Like, oh my gosh, come on, we were doing great. And it's like, well, that's what life is about. It's like having great moments and then not, and then just, you know, dealing with them. So a big thing for me has been like, my present self has to take care of my future self as much as I can, because it really helps out when I have these moments where I don't feel good. And I don't have the energy to like really be there for myself, but luckily, you know, my past self has washed all the dishes. So that's my main motivator of like doing anything in my life is like, well, I'm just looking out for future me. And of course it makes me feel good in the moment as well. I think it's really hard when you have to do tasks that you do not feel like doing, but you just know it's gonna pay off in the long run and it makes ultimately your life easier. So yeah, today I don't really know what we're doing, but we're just gonna, I think, do whatever the f we wanna do. <laughs> I'm just gonna make my coffee. Um, I might go to Home Depot, but what I need to really do is journal and just like brain dump because I haven't been doing that and that's why I've been having like so much anxiety and so much overthinking um, and rumination and just like... It's because I'm not putting it down and releasing it. She's done. Valentine's potluck. I'm making some, what am I making? Oh, Kahlua pork. Spring rolls from Trader Joe's. Genuinely wanted to do more of an effort, but 
I just couldn't bring myself to it today. It's the day before Valentine's Day, which does not even matter. I have now committed myself to this plan and just gonna get through it with a little bit of greenery. Ow, fuck, it got in my eye. That's what I get for trying to be cool. This is not cool. Well, the main place I ordered my books from is Thrift Books because morally, morally, I just like to, uh, you know, not shop from Amazon as much, especially when it's books. It's like, I don't need it tomorrow. Um, although I would love to have it. I don't need it. I can wait. So uh, the other day I did... I splurged on some books and I bought No One Belongs Here More Than You, stories by Miranda July. She's my favorite filmmaker or one of them. And then I splurged on a few others, which I kind of forgot what they were already. Oh, The First Bad Man. This is, this is what started it all because I was watching actual people on movie and it's like a very indie, coming of age. I think it might be this girl's first feature film. She was reading this in the book and I was like, I've always wanted to read this. If you haven't seen any of Miranda July's films, I recommend maybe starting with You, Me, and Everyone We Know, and then watching The Future. And Kajillionaire was also a really good one that I enjoyed. Another one that I bought, Parable of the Sour, of the Sower, Sour? by Octavia E. Butler. I don't know, I feel like I've heard of this before. This was kind of a random one, but I've heard a lot of things about this woman and I just thought it would be a great addition to my ever-growing collection of books. Oh my gosh, I got the big hefty one. Wait, this one's sick. This is a Bible, dude. Hell yeah. But yeah, Women Who Run With The Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. My um, older roommate introduced me to this book and said that it was really just powerful and I never got a chance to like actually begin it and I've been seeing it everywhere. One movie that has just been like one of my favorite movies recently, it's it's a horror film um, based in Mexico and it's called Huesera. If you guys haven't seen that, please go watch it, but um, it's made by this amazing filmmaker named Michelle Garza. She did a live q and I went to go see it with my friend Andrea, and she said that this book really inspired her to make this film. And then another film that I recently watched called African Desperate on Mubi. Phenomenal, I, just my type of movie and very like raw and vulnerable and about being queer and a woman and especially a woman of color, um, but in the movie she has this book as well. So I was like, damn, something's telling me to just fucking read it. I just feel like I'm in that era of um, my womanhood where I just need to like learn from other badass women and learn to embrace all the parts of me and not try to hide them anymore because that's like a huge thing, but damn. This is fucking amazing. I'm so excited to read it and talk to you all about it. It's my little book haul for tonight. Today's Valentine's Day, crazy, but me and my friend, oh, my friend Jade is coming over. She's bringing over pizza and wine and I'm just so excited to have like a really wholesome night because I'm feeling the love around everyone and in the world today, something that's really been <sighs> integral to my growth and my healing in my life has been intimacy in my friendships like being vulnerable and talking talking about things and and um showing love to one another and it not being romantic you know sometimes we only think that love can be within romance or family 
I don't know, it's just really special to me and so I'm excited um, to hang out with my girl and just have a really peaceful night.